So one of the big problems is scale. I mean, it's not a problem. It's like the other problem, right? So the, in the government scheme, we, we are talking about a population of what 1.2, 1.3 billion. There are across India, government hospitals are 14,000. And if you collect everything from the subcenters to the PHCs, to, so there are thousands of them. So any solution you come up with has to work in the scale. We've looked at problems just in Karnataka to start. And there you have, you know, if you just add the PHCs and CHCs and the state, there are about 3,000 odd hospitals involved. So any solution you do has to quickly scale up to that kind of size. They're very diverse users. And, uh, and, uh, but, and, and the other challenges, these numbers, while these numbers are large, in proportion to this, it's very small. Again, it's roughly 100,000 to one. So there's a challenge of, you're going to have a huge load on the hospitals, and typically the load gets pushed higher into the more, uh, you know, the better hospitals or the higher level hospitals and so on. So these are, this is one aspect that any technical solution will need to come up with. And if you really want something that's going to scale up, you're really talking about a billion population that has to be addressed across, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 entities. And if you add the sub-centers, and many of these, since they have to reach the persons in the field, you have to get the ASHA workers, ANMs, and others involved, the number just multiplies by tenfold or something. So, but to, to kind of flip that around, right, um, if you could publish some of this data uh, in an anonymous way, so removing patient name, etc., which shows some of these, so like, for example, you showed that table which said, um, was it um, infant mortality or something, mm -hmm. right? Okay, fine. But if you were to publish an infographic, hmm. that basically they're taking a look, um, you know, out of, out of these, these many states or whatever, right? Based on the data, this is the worst or whatever. So today, like, you're trying to have competition between states on... But all this data is public. All this data is, is public. Is it in a way that's accessible to the public? Yes, one... spread. Uh, no, not census data. National Health Profile 2017. It's published every three years. That has complete data by state. That's where I got some of this data from. So it's available. Maybe it's not awareness present. Is not there. Analysis? No, they actually do their analysis. No, awareness. awareness is not there. So, the, but presumably the people involved in these are looking at those sites. There is data available. So the good news is the part of all this collection of data has meant that they're able to publish things. They can tell you how many visits there were for cardiovascular diseases across all these states, and that is to some extent. They have the data, so you could potentially drill down. The government is trying to put some of this in open data, data.gov.in. So those are happening, but I, I think these are, so uh, let me, I'm not trying to say IT is going to solve the problem. I'm exposing a bunch of issues, and I'm saying there is no solution that I can think of that will address all these. It has to be by looking at it from all standpoints. IT alone is not the solution, absolutely. But, uh, what are we saying is, can IT magnify the effectiveness of something? Can it uh, reduce pain for the patients? Can it provide better, help provide better care? IT is not the end point, right? It's a, I've been talking to now about what IT can do to say that this is where we can go. But there are lots of obstacles and impediments that are coming in the way that have been there along. We have to see if some of them can be cracked. So partly this slide is uh, uh, trying to address that. Part of the reason it's not working is there are multiple solutions being done. Again, with all the best intentions, each program has its own solution. But a uh, mental health program has no access to the uh, depre uh, sorry, the diabetes program as an example. And they are correlated. There is comorbidity between those. They are done independently. So, so one of the challenges we face is that, you know, we are saying IT, but it has to be used by such a wide variety. We are starting with the A&M and ASHA workers all the way to the top uh, MDs who are uh, doing this thing. And they all have different, and they are all from different parts. So there is cultural diversity, geographic diversity, language diversity, and skill diversity. And we are still saying we have to have a system that works for all, right? And every one of them is critical to the whole thing working. If the uh, if, you are, if you have a tablet-based system that the AM will use to uh, make sure that things are being tracked, that better be usable by the AM in a within their context. While if a doctor in a uh, consultant in a super specialty is doing it, he's got two minutes to deal with the patient and can't ask him to type elaborate notes. The problems are there everywhere, right? So that's a uh, uh, Clearly, one issue is every one of these stakeholders, from the doctor to the, you know, the end point, or something, don't see value in this yet. They see a lot of it as just I'm adding data to the hospital administration or to public monitoring order. I'm not seeing any benefit. So that reduces their uh, uh, acceptance of the solution. It's not moving well enough. So sometimes you have fake data also that gets just to finish the process. 
By and large, uh, these have not been done with usability in mind, usability of the specific user. I mean, broadly, maybe they look nice, they do well, but I recently was talking to a person who's working on delivering health solutions in the field, and she said they had a company come and build a very nice, they put their best UX engineers and built a very fancy interface, but it was not usable by the people involved. Right? It looked very nice. It would have got awards for design, but it, would not, it wasn't getting used. So they redid it completely, and it looks clunky, but is very usable. And so the, the IT approach would be to let's get an iPod type, uh, iPad type uh, design done. Well, that may not be what is needed. So a lot of it is because the workflow is not properly probably. I mean, pretty much every system you see, you'll have to log in, you have to do multiple pull downs, enter data, and so on. That's not the way the doctors and the practitioners think. It has to adapt to their workflow much better. A big issue is about uh, data protection. Because we don't have proper laws and regulations in place, a lot of doctors, medical professionals are uh, very wary about sharing data. And they do it in two ways. Either they don't enter the data or they enter it in paper and keep it with them. And it's going to, till some of these regulations fully fall in place, this is going to be an open issue. And of course, we have all the usual problems. We can put all the IT systems, then you build a room for the computer, then you put a UPS for it, and you, know, you do all those things. The money is going to things that are needed just to sustain that. And at the end of the day, you may not have any. So we build all these complex systems, and at the end of it, we find out that while initially it was assumed that good 3G connectivity is everywhere, when you go to the field, actually, you find connectivity is not there. And the entire system has to be redesigned. So depending on the amount of money available, it'll either get redesigned or it'll get canned. So all these are happening program by program. Um, cost is a big issue. Uh, there is still a lot of uh, lack of awareness in the larger medical and government system of what it costs to run a large software, to develop and run a large software system. Um, hardware is not a problem. You say, I want to have a tablet in the hands of every A&M, some budget will be found for that. But if you go and say, I need 10 lakhs more to get the software done, you won't get that budget. Right? You already spent 5 lakhs, 10 lakhs on this thing, why do we need more money? So there's a lot of lack of awareness on what it takes to build these systems. So we've had many uh, systems developed that were fitted to the cost that was available, and they don't work. And definitely, beyond the initial, uh, deploy, uh, initial use, the whole challenge of deploying it and maintaining it, things change, Windows gets upgraded, something else changes, and there's a lot of cost that needs to go into updating these things almost no program budgets for these things. Okay. So it is not, it's, it's a global awareness issue that when, when policies and budgets are being defined, the tail of cost is not usually, you know, say, okay, we can manage it, the 50,000 a year AMC, why should we need more than that? And you know a software engineer's salary starts at money multiples of that, so. So th those are all problems, so these are problems which have, you know, which are, I would, I'm looking at again, again, from the standpoint of technology, what are the things that are coming in the way of it getting to what it can? Obviously, some of these have to be solved from other, other directions. How is uh, budgeting done? How is that managed? Uh, how is infrastructure provided? What are the right tools that should be made available at these points? What are the uh, policies about data, around data protection and privacy? You can't suddenly change the law and say, now privacy means something else. The whole system has to be redone. And that, those are the challenges that are happening. Okay. So, um, so while, while, while I've been saying all this, it is, it is also a fact that public health programs are working in their own way to different levels of success. And it's fairly processized. So uh, you know, it, it is now at the stage where you can uh, expect that any patient, uh, say, um, uh, in, in, under the MCH scheme, uh, is tested for diabetes and it is, there's a very clear protocol under which they'll be handled all the way through. And if they go to the right, uh, in, at least in some states, this is very well done, right? So there are processes and one of the uses of IT would be just how to make these processes better, more enabled, how do you help the field workers to execute this process better rather than following charts and paper and so on. If they fill in the data, it should be telling them what the next steps are. So that's one of the uses that's being done. So here you see a thing where you can take a program, identify exactly what aspects need to be technology enabled and make it available to the right players so that they can do their job better. That is the flavor of what we are looking at really. So what is the, what is the policy view of all this? We talked about all these things, we said it's difficult, complex, a lot of standards, a lot of uh, uh, 
interoperability issues, privacy issues, and so on. Anyone familiar with the policy side of this or the government's approach to this? Any of you involved in that space? E-health in general. So e-health is now a big initiative of the government, right? So the intent is to set up an e-health authority in India, a national e-health authority. It's been in the works for a couple of years. Uh, presumably, it will get announced anytime, right? There's been enough uh, meetings. So the idea is that there is going to be, the government realizes that e-health is something that needs a global view, that needs a lot of things under it. So how do we have an integrated health information system and also look at privacy and security issues that come into that? And also how will this get deployed and rolled out and all that? So those of you in the space, I mean, I think they're still in, uh, I think the concept note consultation phase are going on. They're probably done with that. So we should expect that uh, some kind of uh, uh, rollout will happen in some time maybe in the next year or two. I mean, it was expected two years back, so uh, one year back, so I don't know when it's, what the exact status on this. It's a complex thing because you're going to hand over lots of power to a different authority now, which deals with a lot of the issues that uh, health and IT and others deal with. Um, so how do we uh, guide the adoption of e-health systems? How do you, what, the, what does it mean to aggregate these things? Uh, how to set up health information exchange? Because it is accepted that there will be uh, silos of health uh, data. You need to think about health information up front. And then, again, go back to what is security, confidentiality, privacy, and so on. Okay. So that's, uh, that's, that's the goal. Um, as a, in, in parallel with this, uh, the government has put out some standards. So the problem is in the medical industry, there's so many standards. So what is a standard, what is a universal standard is forever under debate. So as this indicates, you don't want to create yet another standard just to say that we can't use any of the existing standards, right? Uh, the government has now published a EHR, EMR standards for India. So now it's standardized. There is a formal standards that are brought out in December 2016. And at least we have a working starting point. Rather than worrying about what are the standards, the government has said these shall be the standards for India after an elaborate consulting process. They have broadly uh, taken up prevalent international standards successful ones, mostly around the ISO, uh, you know, under the ISO basket of uh, standards, and specifically have recommended open EHR as the architectural framework. So, uh, so advantage is, I mean, so from day one, it's been assumed that this will be a distributed health information system. We are, we can, we don't want to say one central data. We should be ready for a distributed health system. And, uh, store all data about the patient and have access infinitely, persistent data. Right? So these are going to become, I mean, these are standards, so at some point uh, they will be enforced. They're nowhere near there right now. And they have not tried to create any new standards. These are all standards that are working in different parts of the world that are being leveraged to do this. So there's a formal document that's available uh, for the last year. And I guess uh, companies and others are looking at what it means. The current set of uh, implementations, especially in the public health, don't conform to this. So it'll have to change over time. And these are not easy issues. There are no ready available solutions for these. So solutions have to be built. Uh, these are standards and these are specific, uh, uh, architecture specifications. So somebody has to actually implement something that will work in our context for the costs and the diversity and other things. So that's going to be something that's going on for some time. It is already causing uh, you know, doctors, uh, hospitals, and others to start adopting some of these things, right? So for instance, standardizing on SNOMED CT as the terminology is beginning to happen. Uh, looking at uh, open EHR architecture is beginning to happen. I have no way to say how long that will take or what the output of that will be. Okay. And uh, as, a, as since that's a key part of it, the government also now, uh, this, you'll find this on the National Health Portal now. So actually, if you're interested, you should go look at the National Health Portal. They have a section on e-health. They keep changing it a lot, but it's a lot of information is there, at least on what the intended approach is. So these are very early days. I mean, this is remember that standard was one year old. That means it's probably people are just reading and digesting this. Some of these web pages change every two, three months. So these are still very much, you're at a time where some things are just happening. So it's a good time to get into it and try to do something, contribute. So they very clearly define that <coughs> the owner of the data is the patient and patient has uh, rights of privacy over it. And yesterday you heard about privacy and uh, with the current uh, direction in which the Supreme Court uh, uh, you know, 
opinions are going, this should get much strengthened a lot more. In India, we don't have privacy of health data by and large. It's very easy for me to pretty much go directly ask somebody or go get anybody's health data without too much effort. So that's, uh, that's going to get uh, clamped down quite a bit, hopefully. And security, right? One is uh, privacy. Is I want to protect my data. I don't want my data to be public. You know, security is nobody should be able to hack a hospital and get the data and so on. So standards are being proposed around these. Minimal standards. So what level of encryption, where should encryption be done, all these are now part of the uh, standards that are laid out. Even recently, somebody hacked the other database and then stole data. Yeah. They didn't hack the other data. Yeah, okay. They accessed it in an in a, in a, so. Yeah, so see, those issues are there, and that only heightens the need to be more careful about this. We, I mean, we have to take the approach, I believe, that these will be part of our ongoing uh, solutions, and we just have to figure out how to do it better. We have to learn from those, right? And uh, in the medical context, there are some additional things, essentially this notion of trust, right? So who should access your data? So if I have my personal health data, under what conditions and who should have access to that data and to what level of granularity? So I have my personal data, it's secure, but I want different actors, players at different points in time to get access to different data. What could be some of those? Uh, insurance company. You have to be very careful what data they get. Yes, they, they need access to some part of your data, correct. Family. Huh? Family. Family. Yeah, but even there, there might be layers of protection. Yeah, there might be layers of protection that you have to put, right? Not all data is accessible by anybody. So the trust itself could have many a hierarchy yeah, of trust. I can restrict it to my and even there, you might not want them to see something. Even in the family also, suppose somebody, parents come to know about the son or daughter suffering from HIV, they were not allowed to participate. Exactly. So there is different levels of uh, confidentiality in some sense that are needed. Uh, and some of these are protected by acts. The act for the mental health and that covers HIV and all have very rigorous uh, restrictions on how the data can be shared, accessed, so on. So that has to be built into the back end in whatever way. But at the same time, we want to trust doctors and medical institutions because you need them to access data when you may not have been in a position to give consent. One approach to privacy is consent-based opening of data. I will consent who and what access they can for what period of time. But what do you do in an emergency situation? That's a unique requirement in the healthcare set. And it could be from any part of the world. Let's, okay, let's even restrict it to India. It could be in any part of India, get into an accident, and a doctor there has to access my data. How do they do that? They can't ask me or track down my family. Or so, so the government is going to put in place a, a trust framework for this, or proposes a trust framework. And any breach of trust should be act with the law. Yeah, so that's all. So the laws around this would uh, control all. That's where the policy part now comes in. So based on these, a whole bunch of the, the even I, I am hoping that the, C, the Consumer Protect, Data Protection Act would cover some of these things. I'm, I'm sure it will. The question, does this cover the e-health? The no, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't yet, but those are uh, regulations that will come in. The expectation is it will say any cloud that is hosted locally, hosted in India. Private, public. I mean, the government has already empaneled uh, uh, cloud providers in India that you can uh, put in any kind of data. No, as your as your EHR, they are only providing a hosting service. They don't. It doesn't cross the boundary. Right now, I think it has to be India, India hosted in India. Of course, they will be subject to the usual confidentiality and privacy issues. So we are assuming those guys are not going to, you know, violate the. But yeah, it adds to the complexity. So hospitals are having a hard time deciding if they should have in-premises as they are upgrading the system. Should they have in-premise systems or cloud-based systems? And if cloud-based, which cloud-based? So those are. These are all very current happenings, right? They're, going to, they're changing fast. So security brings up whole kinds of issues. We have to get the whole chain uh, working with security. Right? And different people have different ideas of what security means. And they, they, so that is a huge awareness issue that has to come in, security, privacy, and so on. So it just doesn't mean writing something or I've seen the term digital signature used for somebody just signing using electronic means, like putting the JPEG there. Okay. So we need something more than that. And that brings us to the others. These are all needed for treating the patient better. The other side of it is um, we want access to data for research. The whole thing has to, will move only when there's more research done. 
and we get better solutions, better devices, better systems and so on. And so we have to now talk from a structure standpoint, what is data? I mean, what kind of data do you make available? Which is this whole notion of anonymized data. So the general belief is uh, you have to make anonymized data available. You take data, you strip out certain uh, identifiers and other things that will not, with which you cannot locate the individual, and then you make the data available in whether in public or in a controlled form, so that research can happen. The research can be of all kinds of things, right? Uh, healthcare runs on data, so you need research data. But, so anonymization and uh, public access to some kind of data is required. We don't have a way around it. The question is, is it really anonymous? And you know, some of the things you've heard in the last couple of days about uh, aggregation and all that should tell you it's difficult to anonymize data. So specifically in the medical uh, area, uh, we have this whole notion of what's called re-identification. Can I take the data and re-identify the person? Even though the person making the data available claimed it was anonymous. And there are many, many, uh, uh, you know, facets of that. Uh, so one classic case which is, uh, you know, which caught the attention and caused a lot of regulatory changes is this uh, Massachusetts had a law that they were trying to pass in 2009 saying that hospital visit data would be made public by insurance companies after anonymizing it. So they'll take away your name, your, uh, address, various other things. They left a few fields in. It was a tremendous protest, and, uh, but they just passed and the governor signed it into law. So obviously this caused, so one computer scientist at uh, Harvard, I believe, a grad student, wanted to show that this data is not anonymous. So he actually basically took the data that was made public, connected to certain other public data that was available, and was actually able to narrow down the governor's data and send it back to him. <laughs> okay. Which is very ironic, right? I mean, that was the point of the exercise, is to show the, so that is a huge problem. That led to a complete rethink of what privacy means in health data and led to the HIPAA Act and other things in 2013, I believe. So one of the strongest uh, data protection acts that we have is the American HIPAA Privacy Act, which is Health Insurance Privacy and something act, which basically says that how data can be shared, how data, whether, in, uh, whether between uh, uh, um, valid entities or when it's made research. So as an example, very simple examples would be that you no longer put the birth date in the published data. You maybe put the year of birth. Before they said birth date is okay. There are going to be lots of people with the same birth date, why do you need to worry about it? And this person has, you, you in fact, used the birth date to narrow it down. Basically, all you have to take is uh, this data, some public data like birth and death records, water records, and other things, you can triangulate and get pretty much any information. These days, that's becoming much easier with more such data being available. and. Uh, uh, social media and other things. So it's going to be easier and easier to triangulate and pick individuals out. So that's a big uh, issue. So I, I, if I'm not mistaken, even the India uh, Privacy Act just says you cannot go below a pin number, uh, pin code, right? And we are counting on the fact that in a pin code, there are lots of people, right? But what if there is some particular condition where in a pin code, there is only a few hundred people? And then the data becomes less anonymous. So one of the things in the US uh, HIPAA thing is that the zip code that's used will only have three digits if there's less than 20,000 people in that zip code or something. So you start aggregating it or showing less granular data when it's needed. So these are similar things are being, I think, uh, you know, will evolve in India also. So which is one level of re-identification. The other, especially with public health data is, can we start now identifying communities? What if there is a spike in mental health disease in one particular community? and that gets public. The mental health professionals are very worried about that, about that kind of information, because that could stigmatize the entire community, and we don't know what that granularity will be. Right? So it's not very obvious, going back to an earlier question, saying how much of this data should be put up. Even if it's anonymized, the fact that one particular PHC saw a spike in a particular thing can be important information from a privacy standpoint. And we have to get back to what is the meaning of privacy, and at what level is individual versus community, and so on. So we'll conclude with this. So at least now we have clarity on what data ownership has, and this is part in act, part in the guidelines. So clearly the data is owned by you. Your personal data is yours. Right now that's not the way it's practiced in India. Try to get your personal data out of a hospital. It's very difficult, right? So it says it's yours, but held in trust by the doctors or the uh, <coughs> hospitals on your behalf, and uh, is owned by the patient. And uh, the healthcare provider only owns the 
records and the physical and other medium that's used to do it, not the data itself. Okay. And anyway, we have the IT Act, which says that personal information, sensitive personal information, comes under a lot of obligations. And health records is one of those. Medical records and history is already covered by the SPI. So in that sense, the regulatory framework is there. It needs to be understood, uh, detailed out, and uh, exercised. Right. So medical records are not meant to be published already under the IT Act. We don't even need any ad additional act. Obviously, the new acts that come in, the Consumer Protection Act will probably talk about the Data Protection Act will talk. At some point, once NEHA is there, some uh, uh, acts around specific healthcare might come in, and these will tighten this. So the framework is evolving. It's coming there, but a lot of open issues, a lot of details to be worked out, I should say. Uh, sir, um, like with all this IT enabled you know, health services, we always have like these local health workers at the local level. So, uh, how do you think all this segment can contribute or like make use of the services? Um, like how can they do their part of the service better, right? As a service provider, plus how they can also contribute to you know IT enabled like. Is it like data collection can be relied? Data collection, they can probably provide more insights into what's happening. They can talk about the effectiveness of the system. Right? So I think part of the assumption in many of these things is a larger population, especially these health workers and others, will be more and more comfortable with technologies like smartphones. They are, they're using phones anyway, right? So that brings in uh, uh, um, a better uh, understanding of maybe how these should be structured and hopefully they can give feedback on the design itself. Mm -hmm. And then of course the data collection and, uh, but maybe I miss you, how can they contribute from a, I mean, like, I, want I mean they already have feedback systems and things like in some form. Yeah. So like, because you know in many cases it's only the local health workers which are available as a, you know, first point of contact right. and reach to the hospital is very, you know, takes a long, long time. So, but, so how they can be like, you know, working in this paradigm of, you know, complete, you know, IT enabled health services, how okay. their role can be, you know, like, you know, get more efficient. So there are, uh, yeah, so on. So there are uh, pilots, I would say, going on right now where to give very specific application app that a, a health worker would have, which would allow them to manage what they're doing, but they can plan their day better. They can uh, track what they're doing better. They don't have to come back and then send SMS and uh, write reports and so on. Right? So how to make the how to integrate this within the work that they're doing, and that is happening in some places. But uh, again, early stage. Yeah, I, I mean, the, when we say IT system, I think it includes everybody involved, right up to the field workers, the health workers. Otherwise, this will break down. Right? I mean, otherwise you only have the data collection part to some extent, but not the healthcare delivery part of it. So it has to be integrated into the whole delivery. And that is the intention. I don't know how many are there yet, but so thank you.